Some people believe crystals have magical powers, and some of those people are my friends. But as an engineer who depends on empirical data and mathematical analysis to reach my conclusions, I have to say, <laughs> of course they do. I mean, come on. Crystals oscillate at precise frequencies, and for most electronic designs, supply the timing for the clock signals that are the heartbeat of our systems. But don't you think it's time to stop relying on crystals for our clocks? I mean, they take up precious board space. They aren't that stable with temperature and vibration. Surely there is a more modern alternative. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. My guest today is Nick Smith from Texas Instruments, and we're going to talk about a really cool modern alternative to crystals called TI's Bulk Acoustic Wave Technology, or BA Technology. And you can be the judge of whether it has magical powers or not. <laughs> And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about TI's bulk acoustic wave technology. Hi, Nick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia. Happy to be here. We're going to be talking about TI's bulk acoustic wave technology today. But Nick, before we jump into the details, what kind of stuff are we going to be covering today? Ah, good question. Yeah, and I'm very excited to be talking about Bulk Acoustic Wave. It's a very cool TI technology that's come onto the market. I have seen some of your chalk talks before, so I actually anticipated some questions that might come up about BA. So first of all, what is TI BA technology? Some details about what that is, as well as how does it work? And then what products use TI BA technology? What can you go get started with today? What are the benefits of BA technology? What applications use it? And then what's the next step if you're interested, if you want to get started with BA? So just high level, it's a technology from TI that integrates a clocking reference into the package of devices. So for instance, for MCU or wireless applications, it would eliminate the need for an external crystal in a wireless or MCU application by integrating the resonator into the package of the TI device. So it's very cool, and I figure that many people have all these questions in the back of their head. Okay, so what exactly is bulk acoustic wave technology? Nick, I don't think I've heard about BA before. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I actually hadn't heard much about BA either, and I got the opportunity to spend some time with the engineers in our R&D department who developed it. So BA is a technology called Bulk Acoustic Wave. And as I mentioned before, it's a technology that allows us to integrate an accurate clocking reference into the package of an existing device. So BA technology is really the core enabler for integrating that MEMS or microelectromechanical system on to a device. When that is enabled, it allows for a high precision, low jitter clock reference to be, as I mentioned, integrated into the package of wireless MCU application. This lets you have a less bulky solution without external crystals and additionally delivers a much cleaner reference. So it's very exciting. Okay, so walk me through exactly how this works. Sure. So the way that the BA technology works is that there's a piezoelectric material made of aluminum nitride that's sandwiched between two electrodes, so one signal and one ground electrode. When these electrodes are excited, so a voltage is applied, the piezoelectric material will resonate at a very high frequency, which then we can take and use as a reference for RF timing or MCU applications. And it's a very stable and precision source that we can get from this microelectrical mechanical system. A few more details about it. So you can see basically how the BA device fits into a package. For a regular QFN package, like the product from Texas Instruments, you'll have your lead frame, your silicon die, and then the BA device is very small and can sit on top of that silicon die. So it can be fully integrated into the QFN package. Then that BA device will service the phase lock loop or the PLL circuit of our wireless MCU device, and it will provide an accurate clocking reference frequency for that RF system. 
Additionally, I mentioned that we use the voltage to kind of excite this piezoelectric vibration. We can also compensate to allow for that resonance to stay stable both over temperature and battery voltage fluctuations. So where would I find Ba today? That's a great question. Actually, many of my colleagues would probably tell you this is the longest I've gone so far with talking about the actual TI product. So I'm really happy you asked. We have a product released today called the Simplelink CC2652RB. So this is a multi-standard wireless MCU. It's actually the industry's first and only completely crystalless wireless MCU that's enabled by the TI BAW technology. So on this device, you can do Bluetooth Low Energy, Thread, Zigbee, or multi-protocol applications without any external crystals in your design. The device also has unparalleled RF performance and low power performance, which is really beneficial. And it's inside a 7x7 QFN package, which is quite small when you take into account that the ball resonator circuit is integrated as well. This 7x7 package allows you to be pin-to-pin compatible with other offerings from the TI connectivity portfolio. So, for instance, if you're currently using a TI connectivity device in that 7x7 package that doesn't use the BAW technology, you can upgrade with the same hardware design minus the crystals to the BAW device. And that's something that we've seen users doing if they want to simplify their circuit, if they want to source less devices, they upgrade to a BAW-enabled device. So a quick walkthrough of what the device actually is, since I gave a background on the BAW technology, I want to show you the benefits of the device that has the BAW technology. So the device is made up of an ARM Cortex M4F application MCU. So this is an MCU dedicated to the user to create their application. Additionally, it has a software-defined radio with its own core that, like I mentioned, can support Bluetooth 5, Thread, and Zigbee on this BAW device. We actually have a unique third core on the device called the Sensor Controller Engine. This is a TI proprietary core. It's ultra-low power. It's user programmable, and you can use it to interface with the peripherals of the device in a very low power way. So you could program this sensor controller engine, the ARM Cortex M4F and the radio could sleep and the sensor controller could monitor sensor inputs, do some basic filtering and math functions and then wake the device up when it needs to transmit. The device also has 352K of flash and 80K of RAM on board. So again, this is the Simplink CC2652RB device. It's the only device out there on the market that can do these wireless applications without any external crystals. So what exactly does Ball buy me as an engineer? Yeah, really good question. There are a lot of benefits of using a Ball device. I mentioned high level some of them. Obviously, you can remove the crystal, but what are some of the reasons you'd want to do that? So the BAW device really kind of helps overcome some of the limitations you run into with quartz crystal devices, which is typically what you would use in an application like this. You'd use an external quartz crystal. What the BAW device allows you to do is increase your performance so you have much more stability than a typical crystal solution. You have a simpler RF design, which also allows you to have a smaller size solution. And then in a lot of cases, you'll have a lower cost solution because you're not having to source and buy these external quartz crystal resonators for your application. So Nick, do you have any use cases you can show me? Yeah, so to expand more on some of the use cases and some of the benefits here of using the BAW technology, one example is in harsh environments like mechanical shock, meaning environments where the product might experience vibrations, the BAW technology is actually more stable and more accurate than a quartz crystal. So when you have these mechanical shock environments, the BAW technology is on average about three times more accurate than solutions that use external crystals. And this was tested against a military standard that is a standard used by quartz crystal manufacturers. So you can see the setup that we used to test. That is a mechanical shock tester that introduces vibrations into your system. Then you can see the results. The crystalless solution is in blue, and the external crystal solution is in red. So you can show that the PPM variance, so that's the variance in the crystal reference, is much smaller for the crystalless solution. And that's important because as the variance in the reference grows, you start to introduce timing errors within your MCU, and that introduces transmission issues in your RF system. 
including worse sensitivity or potentially missed transmissions. So that's why it's important to remain stable under environments with, for instance, mechanical shock. And some examples of where it can and has been used in those environments are, for instance, handheld power tools. A lot of the power tools on the market today are starting to introduce Bluetooth low energy in order to allow the users to connect to a phone or to track the power tool on a job site. So the 2652RB could be used in the power tool to give that Bluetooth low energy connection and also be robust in this environment where you're introducing a lot of vibration. Similar with factory automation, a lot of equipment diagnostics are done with BLE or connectivity, and obviously the sensing is done on moving parts with a lot of vibration. Pressure transmitters that you find in a factory as well. Air conditioning solutions where the user may want to connect to the air conditioner with their smartphone or the BLE devices being used for diagnostics. Air conditioners have a lot of mechanical parts that can introduce vibration as well, so using the BAW technology would be a huge benefit. And then additionally, sensing in other vibration-rich environments like public transit, railway sensing, applications like that. So Nick, I would imagine that in harsh environments, temperature would play a big role here as well, right? Yeah, that's a very good point. A lot of the environments you'll run into with some industrial applications have extended temp ranges, either very hot or very cold. And this is a factor that comes into play with clocking accuracy. So in a harsh environment with temperature variance, the crystalist solution, the integrated BAW technology, is again more accurate than an extended crystal. There's less variance over temperature. So this allows, even in high temp environments, to maintain a good receiver sensitivity and frequency accuracy for your RF system so that you're not dropping transmissions. The BAW resonator, as I mentioned earlier, is actively compensated to achieve this stability over temperature. So if you think of some of the applications that would require wireless technology and high temperature environments... One good example is circuit breakers or basically anything in the grid and metering space. You know, a lot of those products sit outside, for instance, could be in Texas where I'm at in the 110 degree Fahrenheit weather or could be up in Alaska. So you could have both a hot or a cold environment where you need to make sure you maintain that crystal accuracy. Additionally, factory automation, which I mentioned for the vibrations, you'll also see high temp environments with the machinery being used. Again, HVAC systems, I'll come back to the same example. Where I'm at in Texas, you could have your HVAC system sitting in the attic where it can get easily over 100 degrees, and you still need your wireless system to maintain that stability of transmission, which comes from the clocking reference. And one example that I actually didn't think of myself at first would be an asset tracking, like the transport of cold chain goods, so refrigerated goods. A lot of users like to have a sensor to monitor that the temperature has remained stable when those goods are transmitted. And again, in this low temperature environment, the crystalless MCU, the crystalless wireless solution will maintain a greater stability. And with no crystal, this would make our board layout a bit simpler, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. And if you ask the people who are doing these layouts and creating these products, all of them have had a problem with crystals in the past. So there are some great benefits of this crystalless solution. In general, you can reduce your overall solution size 12 to 15%. You can lower that external component count. You will not need to source crystals anymore. And this simplifies the board layout overall. You don't have to route your I.O. signals around a high-frequency crystal design with a keep-out zone. It's a great point. In general, you can have smaller solutions, simpler solutions with an easier board layout. So what kind of applications would benefit the most from Ba? do you think? Great question. I did touch on some of them before with the mechanical shock and temperature applications, But the three major industries that I see benefiting from BA are grid infrastructure, factory and building automation, and medical. In grid, we talked about many of the products sit outside in the sun or the cold, and there's many harsh vibration-rich products in grid infrastructure, like, for instance, a wind turbine. In factory and building automation, we see more and more use cases getting connected We see connected HVAC systems, connected building security systems, connected factory equipment and assembly lines. And in both these environments, you're subjected to temperature swings, 
and vibration. And finally, in the medical industry, a lot of the products in the medical industry are interfacing and monitoring patients. With these applications monitoring and interacting with patients, you want the solution to be as small as possible and as less intrusive as possible. Additionally, you need a very robust solution in a medical space. So the small overall solution size of BAW as well as the robustness to both vibration-rich and temperature environments are a big advantage in grid, factory, and building automation and the medical industries. Okay, I'm excited to get started using BAW in one of my next designs. So Nick, where should I start? Great. I'm glad you're excited about BAW. I'm excited about it as well. The good news is we have everything you need to get started today available. Kind of the one-stop shop, the first place I would go is www.ti.com slash BAW. There's many people smarter than me who will help you learn more about the technology than you've learned today. We're just scratching the surface, so please look deeper there. Additionally, on ti.com slash BAW, you can start to learn about the product. The CC2652RB that I mentioned, that's the industry's only crystalless wireless MCU solution. It gives you BLE, Zigbee, and Thread connectivity. After that, if you want to get started and get hands-on, we do have a low-cost development kit available with the CC2652RB on board. So you can purchase that development kit, plug it right in, and we have a whole set of training and software examples that you can get started with. So you can order the development kit, get it on your desk, get up and running in about five minutes. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Nick. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm always excited to talk about BAW technology. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about TI's bulk acoustic wave technology. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.